Hey guys, how you doing? Um, welcome to another week of Unfiltered, and I believe if I've done everything correct, there should be no ambient noise, there should be no buzzing like last week, there should be no noises kicking on or humming or any shit like that. Uh, so, first off, this week's going to be a little bit different. There's, there's not going to be any cutaways, this is going to be a single shot, uh, me talking to you kind of a, a lot like the first one I ever did. Uh, reason being, I didn't do any uh, updates this week, day-to-day uh, -day stuff, because it was it was a busy week, a lot going on, um, and I I just didn't get to it. And I said, "Fuck it, I don't." I, there's no formula. Uh, I'm, I'm discovering shit. I'm working on shit. I'm playing with shit. So we'll see how this goes. But uh, I sound better, obviously. So I'm probably at 95%. I'm still a little bit stuffed up. Uh, wadded twice this week. I didn't do Friday's wad. Ran out of time. Wasn't going to do it late. This coming week, I'll be better off. Uh, Joe, thank you for that uh, video that you posted, the link, about the guy talking about, you know, when it's go time, it's go time, and you can't ease into shit. Uh, I think I have to process that a little bit more. I'm, I, I think in some ways I agree with the guy, in other ways I do not. Um, I think there is uh, different paths for different people, although I think as a general rule, I probably do apply with the guy. Uh, I'm not going to go with Progenix, uh, Joe, again, that link you sent me. I knew all that stuff. I knew that uh, the original formula Dr. Scott Connolly had brought to the company or he had used to start the company had left with him, and I knew that they had outsourced for cheaper material. Um, the quality of whey protein nowadays is it's, it's dirt cheap for, for pretty what would have been years ago high-quality whey protein, so that was really kind of my whole idea, but... Uh, when you sent me the link and I read the article, although I don't necessarily agree with everything in the position of the blog post, um, I decided, heck yeah, I'll go with a company I trust. So I went with 3Fuel. That'll be in on the morning, so I'll be able to do my morning adjustments for that uh, as far as how I eat and how I uh, recover, stuff like that. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I uh, bulletproofed my coffee all week this week, and that's awesome fucking totally a fan uh that's going to be my morning reg regimen uh, i'm going to go with a bulletproof coffee i'll come in uh, about six between six and seven i'll get my workout in uh the idea is to get a, a, a warm-up in get my wad in and do some mobility these are the things that have been lacking and then uh right after that i'll do my recovery shake so that'll that'll be my morning uh in a snapshot uh i'll knock in the three fuel and I think that is probably going to be the best combination for me uh, for a variety of reasons, but I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, I pretty much stayed static about this week. I guess I might have gained 0.3 of a pound or something like that. Um, I, I'd really be interested to find out what the algorithm is and how it calculates on the Fitbit scale for body fat percentage because supposedly that went up by like three percent so there's a lot of deviation um but even with the most quote-unquote accurate uh body body uh composition measuring tools that are out there there's i think between three to five percent deviation maybe two to three percent with hydrostatic weighing uh but i think it's actually in the three to five percent and that's that's a huge margin uh it's a huge variable and Body fat percentage, body composition, isn't necessarily a metric of health. Not necessarily. I want to be very clear on that. Um, BMI, all that stuff, these are measurements that with other measurements can tell a story, but they don't tell the whole story. And I think people get caught up in the uh, it, thinking it tells the whole story. So it's just another data point that I'm utilizing. Um, again, with the Fitbit and all the all the um, bio data that's available to that, <laughs> it's another it's another uh, data set for this overall experiment that I'm geeking out on, and I'm having fun with. And here's the cool thing: I got my 23andMe reports back, and that came in this morning, so I'm super stoked. And that was really the driving force or behind me deciding to do this in one shot. I'm going to talk with you guys about it a little bit. Uh, 
when I figure out how to not have to overlay vocals or to do audio and uh, the filming of my um, screenshot at the without it, it, without having to lay vocals or match them up like I did last time, I need to know how to. F I need to figure out, and I know there's a way, how to do a filming of my screenshot of my desktop and audio on the same thing at the same time. I believe Brian showed me how to do that, and then I fucking quickly forgot. I did the best I could last time, but I wasn't quite as happy with the um, the end result production value of it that I want to be. So I'm going to do some digging and some more research to find figure that out <coughs> in a way that's pretty simple, straightforward, and I can remember. One thing I can say, at least in my opinion, there are really no good how-to videos out there on anything you want to do. People fucking suck at making how-to videos, by and large. 99% of the how-to videos out there are fucking horrible. You're amateurs, you're not helping, you're only confusing the matter, fucking stop. Um, get, take courses in how to teach and how to learn, um, and how people learn, and then break that shit down Barney style and, multi and, and become really, really, really fucking proficient with technologies that are available before you start putting shit out there. Because it fucking sucks, and it's, it, it, for someone like me, it pisses me off, because God damn it, I want to know. Oh, uh, and that, that leads into, if anyone out there has um, the technical know-how to do that, uh, hit me up, yo. We'll put together some kick-ass fucking how-to videos, and we'll start to howtodofuckinganything.com. Anyone steals that, I got on tape my idea. I'll punch you in the fucking mouth. Uh, continuing on. So here is my 23andMe um, desktop or the homepage. I'll go into reports. <coughs> this is really fucking cool. So there's a variety of reports that are available to you. Um, a total of, I think, 65 or some shit like that. Yeah, 65 reports are available. Um, three of the reports are ancestry reports, 36 reports on carrier status, so various type of um, markers that you have that might be an indicator that you have uh, genetic anomalies or potential for diseases and whatnot that you could pass on to children if you had them. Uh, of the 36 reports that they that they currently are testing based upon their database and people who are participants, I have none, so that's pretty cool. I don't have any of the, the markers anyways that would be passed along to my uh, lineage, which I thought to be pretty cool. Um, ancestry reports, wellness reports, trait reports, there's four wellness reports, there's six tutorials, which they roll up into that 65 reports number, and I think, all right, let's see, 40, I don't know, I guess not. So. Uh, 36 carrier status reports, three ancestry reports, four wellness reports, and 22 trait reports. Uh, wellness reports cover everything from, hold on, uh, caffeine consumption, alcohol flush reaction, lactose intolerance, and muscle composition. So general overview, I thought this was pretty cool. Based upon my genetics, I... I have a, my genetic profile says I'm likely to consume more caffeine than the average person. And again, this is in their database based upon people who have done 23andMe and people who have uh, filled out their questionnaires um, to add to the database and people who are participants in this uh, growing database of genetic profiling, which is fucking cool. So of those, I'm likely to consume more alcohol based upon uh, the genetic traits that they've uh, found and the, and the two type of genes that they've associated with it. And that's really cool because anyone who knows me and has spent any time with me is floored by the amount of coffee and caffeine I consume. Um, although I'm trying to reduce that amount. Um, sorry, dude. It's genetic. Uh, not my fault. My genes need caffeine. So I am simply providing for my genetic composition. Um, yeah, sorry, my genes need it. Deal with it, yo. Alcohol flush, I'm unlikely to flush, which means I, uh, I have the proteins 
uh, at least in my, my genetic profiling, says I have the proteins that allow me to process alcohol normally like others. Um, I am likely tolerant based upon um, my gene profile for, I'm likely lactose tolerant. So thank you to my ancestors for building up a tolerance to lactose. Uh, and my muscle composition, I have the gene marker for a muscle composition that's like a sprinter, meaning uh, a lot of power output, so uh, explosive power. And uh, generally, you know, there's, there's elements to this. Everybody has type, type one, type two, type two AB. Um, muscle fibers and we're only learning to understand muscle fibers and how certain muscle fibers will based upon training will you'll see an adaptation of a muscle taking on more of a fast twitch versus slow twitch um, type of uh, type of uh, recruitment pattern is pretty interesting but I have mostly uh, the genetic markers for fast twitch muscle fibers which does make sense uh and in it's it's interesting because i'm drawn to that kind of training so i like explosive power kind of training it's just always been something i preferred so it's it's interesting that my genetic profile uh indicates that and then i fell into it so th this is really fucking cool uh in a hey what do your genes tell well what do my genes tell me or at least my genetic profile that they've done what does it tell me? How does it inform me about my past and about past choices? And this is really cool. Like to look at this, and go, holy shit! Um, and this is not like astrology. Uh, fuck you. That's all suggestion. This is just, hey, look. Here's what your genes and the sample groups that we have tell us. So this is pretty fucking cool. Uh, but here's the coolest thing for me. Anyway, I was I was really happy to. I was I was really kind of tripped out by this. It was cool. Um, being a, an avid fan of um, archaeology and <clears throat> anthropology and stuff like that, uh, it, I have I, I, I was a history major. Um, I have my degree and my bachelor's degrees in history, and I've always been a history junkie, but all of human history. So um, the archaeological record, human migration patterns, our genes. All that stuff has always been very fascinating to me. And I've always found our gen our, uh, our relatives in a species sense to be cool. Um, and the other hominids that we've found, the fossil records and stuff like that to be totally cool and interesting. And I've always found uh, the emerging uh, growing body of evidence and knowledge of Neanderthals to be cool. And then, so the cool thing is, one of the three reports is Neanderthal ancestry. See that right there at the bottom? Boom, Neanderthal ancestry. So fucking cool. My Neanderthal profile, and again, this will explain a lot. Um, so there's, uh, there are traits or variants. There's markers in your genes <coughs> that they test <coughs> that shows how much um, Neanderthal DNA you have in you uh, or traits and variations, stuff like that. Uh, about the report, let's click on that. Um, this report can tell you whether you have certain genetic variants of Neanderthal original origin out of the 2,872 Neanderthal variants we test. How your Neanderthal ancestry compares to other 23andMe users. So, uh, I have more than uh, more Neanderthal variants than 83% of 23andMe uh, 23andMe customers. Um, However, your Neanderthal ancestry accounts for less than 4% of your overall DNA. So, the cool thing is, uh, yeah, more than, well, less than 4%, but still, 4% of my um, overall DNA has origins in Neanderthal DNA. That's fucking trippy. That is so cool and trippy, especially when you consider um, variations of less than 
a percent or one percent in in DNA profile can you, now you're talking about separate species. So that's fucking cool, man. Uh, and and other people have it too. I have. I'm 4% or slightly there under. I think their readings might be off. Uh, Neanderthal fucking DNA. Um, have fairly heavy brow. Just joking, doesn't play out like that. But that's just gold me. And I found that to be, I was like giddy. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Uh, I, I love the idea of, of, of having, <clears throat> uh, the having DNA that connects me to um, one of our um, ancestral cousins, and that's just fucking cool to me. Um, so that was one thing I found really fun for me. Um, my variance is 300, like I said. Uh, it goes through like there's a whole introduction. And discussion about what you is and uh, what it is, um, and what traits may have been influenced by Neanderthals. M my trait that was uh, the one that I have a marker for is my height, and it actually makes me slightly shorter. So that leads me to believe that probably, and my mom won't be happy to hear this. Uh, my mom is the shorter of my parents, and my mom is rather vertically challenged. So I think uh, the majority, or at least the dominant Neanderthal traits that I have come from my mother. So thanks, Mom. I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, although, uh, upon meeting my parents, you would probably think that my father is more Neanderthal than my mother. But height being the determining factor, it seems the, the, the strong genes come from my mom. So, Mom, you got really kick-ass, um, strong Neanderthal traits, and you passed, uh, unfortunately, um, your height limited mine, and we can trace that back to our Neanderthal origins. Um, so, I should have been taller, Mom. Uh, I'm not, and it's your fault. Well, it's our Neanderthal. The Neanderthal traits on your side fault. So, the other thing is this. Um, there's haplogroups and ancestry composition, right? So, my ancestry group... And I might have lost some viewers at this point. Uh, if you don't find this stuff interesting, uh, you're fucking weird. Um, so I'm 100% European as far as the majority of my DNA goes. But uh, so here's the cool thing. 50% uh, is British and Irish. 13.8% uh, of my genetic um, profile is French and German. 1.3% is Scandinavian. 26.5% um, is broadly Northwestern European. Southern European is 5.2%. That breakdown is 3.4% Sardinian, which is pretty interesting because that's a pretty isolated group. 0.6% uh, is Iberian. Um, less than 0.1% is Balkan. 1.2% Eastern European. And broadly European is about 2%. I have no South Asian, at least measurable. I have no East Asian or Native American, which is interesting because um, if, if my grandfather on my mother's side, my mother's father, if he was correct, which I have no reason to believe he wasn't, he was like, uh, I want to say... Uh, half, maybe a quarter. I think he was a quarter um, Pequot Indian because his one of his grandparents was 100%, I believe, according to what he said, which would made my mother um, one eighth. Let's see, maybe he was an, uh, let's see, was he an eighth or uh, he might have been a, an eighth. And then mom's like a 16th and then I'm like a 32nd or something like that. I don't know. But again, that's that's by word. That's uh, my shitty ass memory of these conversations with my mother. But either way, um, there is at least within uh, conversations, we are well within from my mother's side. There is uh, clearly um, American Indian blood in that side of my family tree. So from my mother's side, not my father's. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, my father's side 
at least my family name, uh, came to the Americas on the on a British warship as a prisoner of war in the War of 1812. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but it, my genetic profile doesn't show any um, Middle Eastern nor Sub-Saharan African nor Oceana. So th this is just really kind of cool, and you can dig into it more. Uh, it shows your genetic profile like this, which is pretty cool showing what my breakdown is. Uh, like I said, this is really cool to me. I found it interesting. Um, another emerging technology. And this is this is kind of a, a cool database in the fact that we've mapped the hum human genome, but now these like crowdsourcing type things like a 23andMe, where you opt in and you answer questions based upon your health. And there's all kinds of things you can do to answer questions which helps them better determine uh, what genes are associated with what possibility for heart disease or diabetes and, and name it. Name the disease. Um, the more people's genetic profiles they have and the more people who opt in and answer these questions, the better they can understand how genes affect in what genes influence, in what markers on what genes influence people's uh, likelihood to develop any number of disorders, or in, in it, it just helps us. It, it's so cool that this is happening, and and then you throw in like my Fitbit. So we're getting we we're we're on the we're in the very early stages of this really really fucking cool time where we're going to have these massive amounts of data that's going to better inform us to be able to, to train better and make better decisions about our health and our well-being. It's just fucking cool, man. Uh, some people, there's a, like I said, some people, I think I mentioned last week that I guess there's some kind of class action lawsuit against Fitbit. For the people doing that, you're a fucking idiot. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an emerging technology. It's not there yet. So get over yourselves. St stop, stop being a dick. Um, you're just, you're seriously, you're fucking it up. Um, they're not the only ones doing it. There's a shit ton of companies that are in it. So there's, there's something there. Apple wouldn't be involved with it if they didn't see it as, uh, if, if it wasn't legit, so to speak. And it's, it's in its infancies of legitimacy. So it's not a, a, a total, um, health monitoring, but it helps you to be more aware and work towards becoming more accountable. So it's a tool and it, it's an emerging tool. Uh, God, where would we have been if our fucking ancestors been like, dude, that fucking Flint hammer sucks. I'm going to fucking sue you. It doesn't work as advertised. That shit broke on my like 35th strike on that fucking brass nail. Fuck this. I'm done. So fuck it. Hammers are not a technology of the future. Let's figure out some other kind of build technology. Shut up. It's in its early stages. It's going to get better. It's going to help us. And it's going to be fucking awesome. So take Fitbit, add 23andMe together, add smart scales into it, uh, add uh, CrossFit as a tool that measures power output, um, add emerging there's you know there's this cool new like collar that's supposed to measure bar speed and stuff like that <coughs> to better tell you what your force production is on every rep and stuff there's, there's all these cool things that are coming out and they're available or they're going to be available they're 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 making their way to the consumer market for the general population you don't have to go to a, a university and partake in a, a, a study that's being funded by god knows who this is you man you can do this shit on your own you can you know really small investments in this stuff and you can start to glean a bunch of information and really dig into what how to be healthier and that's fucking cool and I'm stoked for it. And I'm having a fun time doing this. And I'm enjoying sharing this with all of you. Uh, for those of you still watching this, thank you. For those of you who checked out, were like, dude, he's just fucking rambling on. That's what I fucking do. Fuck you. That, this shit's mine, man. You ain't got to keep watching. But I hope you do. And I hope everybody enjoyed this week. Uh, like I said, a little bit different than it has been. As I get better at tracking stuff, uh, I will... 
Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add more content to this. I'll try to slice stuff together. Each week's going to probably be different. Uh, as I learn to do shit, I'll add shit. Um, other than that, I think that's all I have. This is probably longer than 20 minutes, but I do not know. So, uh, thanks for watching. Sorry if it seemed random and, and all over the place, but fuck, man, this is really cool. And I'll find a way to kind of uh, distill it down and do screenshots of it so you can see it. I highly recommend getting uh, a wearable. And I highly recommend doing 23andMe because it's fucking cool, man. Uh, and having a snapshot of your genetic ancestry is cool. And the more people who do it, the better it's going to be. And the more people who answer the questions, the more accurate it's going to be. And this is this right here is great crowdsourcing. This this has awesome potential. Uh, this this is better than fucking Snapchat. If you Snapchat and you Instagram like a junkie and stuff like that, and you don't do this, fuck you. Stop. Spend the money, get 23andMe, invest, and help us. Now, and, and not even us. I'm not I'm talking 23andMe. I'm not involved with them financially. I'm talking about help us as a species and as a, as a, as a culture um, gain more insight and a better understanding of where we come from, what we are, and how we can go and, and be healthier and better as we continue on. Be part of it. This shit's cool, man. This is this is the kind of stuff that crowdsourcing is fucking cool and awesome for. News, not so much. This, very much so. Um, yeah, I, I hope you all are having a good week. And I hope you all have a good week. And I will see you next week. Uh, thanks for watching. Talk soon. Bye.